Welcome to Scenorama TV. I'm Miss Kelly. Papa Tom is going to show you how to build a cool cutaway volcano using our mountain diorama kit in a large basin backdrop. Now, some extra supplies that you'll need are some masking tape, yesterday's newspaper, and some scissors, but be sure and ask Mom and Dad first. Now, let's go check out Papa Tom and see his great looking cutaway volcano. Okay, well, let's get started then. What we're going to want to do, I think, is just give ourselves a little height for the mountain, maybe about four inches, and this will be our three sides and back. Connect the dots. And we'll just cut this four inch base portion for the back and the sides. Make sure to get mom or dad's help before using anything sharp such as scissors. Okay, now that we've got the front drawn here, let's cut it out. So now that we know that it fits, let's start cementing it in place. And you don't want to get it gushed full there, just enough to make it stick. This glue takes about 45 minutes or an hour to set up and then we'll continue on. We'll fill up the cavity here with the paper ball rolls that we've made earlier, uh, taping things in place with the tape, and then go through the procedure with adding on the plaster cloth to create our whole uh, volcano. Now, as you can see, we've done a few things since we last talked. We finished off by putting some more plaster in here and on the base, just to give it some uniformity, and then continued to wrap it around the sides here of which I'll sand lightly before I paint it. We're going to do some rocks now too, so I want to make some rocks to put into the side here. By using the mixture that it talks about in the instructions, it says to take six tablespoons of hydrocal, and we're going to take the two spoons of water that I've already got mixed here, and we'll pour that in. Stir this up in your tray. Most diverse volcanoes are along the edge of continents, island chains, or at the bottom of the ocean. And then you can pour your rocks right into the mold. You can take them and pop them out of the mold in about half hour to 45 minutes. And then while they're still damp, you can adhere them to the uh, mountain. You want to make sure that they're really dry, dry before you stain your rocks. Uh, we've got the rocks out now, and as you can see, this rock here, which has a kind of a double formation. I'm going to snap it in half and put it in two different places. That'll give us a little bit more coverage in rocks. If we're going to put, say, this rock right here in this location, obviously it doesn't fit. Taking the X-Acto knife, cut just a little bit into the hill. And what this will do is create just a little bit of an envelope to stick the rock into. As you can see, it now fits in a little bit nicer and we'll spray the plaster because you want to get it a little moist. You want to get the rock dampened first, shake off, shake off the excess. Then take one of your scrap pieces here, stay in the water, take it out, and just kind of wad it up and stick it right in place. Then you continue to take more of your scraps and you just kind of work it in around the edges and it'll look as though the rock was always part of it to begin with and enjoy yourself. This might be a school project, but you know what? You're having fun. Uh, now that we've got it all on there, we're going to have to let it dry uh, overnight, but with some more of the uh, plaster, I mean the hydrocal that we've got here, we can make the lava flow portion in here. So I've got some already set aside here like we had before for the rocks and add the water to it again. And stir it up. Now you're going to want just a little bit more water in it because you're going to want it to pour out of here where a little bit wetter than what we had for the rocks. So let's just pour it down from the center here and we'll let that dry overnight. Now as you can see it's all dried out. The rocks that we put on yesterday have dried so now they'll accept the uh, staining pigment. It comes in strips like this with the yellow, brown, and black. And if you read the instructions, of course, it says to mix them about 50% on each. 50% water, 50% uh, um, stain, except for the black. Make that about a 3 to 1 so that it's thinner because it comes out pretty strong. Just take some yellow 
and blotch it on in spots on each one of the stones. All you want to do is get a little bit of yellow on there. Let's do the brown next and do the same thing. Blotch it on and all you're trying to do is give it a spotted kind of a leopard type print and you'll be amazed on how easy this comes out. There are three major types of volcanoes. Shield volcanoes, cinder cone volcanoes, and composite volcanoes. And then you take the black and the black just kind of melds all the colors together and no matter how hard you try to mess it up, you just can't. It's absolutely foolproof. Composite volcanoes are the most common, making up 80% of the Earth's volcanoes. I mean, just look at that, huh? So simple and easy, anybody can do it. Continuing to dry, we can mix up our, our thunder coat, which is going to go on the whole rest of the model right up here. What you want to do is you want to dab on this earth undercoat all over everything. And the only reason you're doing this is so that when you go to put the grass on and bushes and everything else, what you want to do is have something that at least looks a little bit like dirt 